Welcome to Nest Mensals, uh, CFL, not quite halftime report, because, you know, we're only in week, week nine, I think, week nine or ten, I can never remember anything for the rest, for the life of me, we are in week ten. Well, there really is no halftime in the CFL, because there's 19 weeks, so I guess this is kind of halftime. I don't know, I'm confusing myself on school eve, which means I'm going to school first day tomorrow. <sighs> But yeah, you're probably wondering why I'm an American and I watch CFL. Well, because I can. CFL's so much faster and more entertaining than NFL. I'll take my football with three downs, if you will. So we're going to start in Swaggerville. The Bombers, 7-1, and one, destroying absolutely... They've lost to only one team, Calgary. Um, the best pass defense, the best run, the third best run defense, and the best overall defense by 40 yards, which is pretty impressive. And there are four bombers in the top 10 in interceptions. Yeah. Then you got two players with pick sixes, at least as far as I know, Javon Johnson and Alex Suber, both coincidentally against the Tiger Cats. Hell, their defense is so good that their best that their offense, despite being the best team in the league. Point one yards better than Toronto, who is the worst. The blue and gold. The blue and gold also have a favorable second half schedule. Honestly, they've got the playoff wrapped up. They can clinch five hundred with the. They can they can clinch five hundred if they beat the Riders both weeks. And since the Riders are in last place, it should be, you know, a relatively easy task, especially after last year's Banjo Bowl whipping, thirty-one two Bombers. And they were 4-14 four and 14 last year, too. So, you can talk about a turnaround. So, yeah, anyways, we're going to move on. Next we're, next, we're going with the defending Grey Cup champion, Alouettes, who have the best offense in the league and the third best defense in the league, partially due to the fact that Anthony Calvillo has the most passing yards in the league, with 2,464, which is only two better than... Um, uh, Burris from Calgary. Um, Brandon Whitaker is also leading the CFL in rushing with 614 yards. The only one even remote, only two players are really even close, and that would be Fred Reed of the Bombers and Avon Coburn from the Tiger Cats, who played last year with the um, the uh, Alouettes, but then signed with the. Uh, Tiger Cats. As you can tell, I'm not really used to doing this. So, The Alouettes, though, do have a tough schedule coming up. They have back-to-back -to -back games against the Tiger Cats. They also have their three games against the Bombers. The only pushovers they play are Toronto once and BC once. Honestly, this team's got a tough remaining schedule, but as long as Calvillo and Whitaker can keep doing what they're doing, I honestly can't see why the defending Grey Cup champions can't make another run of it. Of course, that's just me. We're going to continue with the Tie Cats with the worst passing defense in the entire CFL. They're, they also have third best rusher in the league and the third best passer in the league, former Blue Bomber quarterback Kevin Glenn. Well, we're talking about, you know... Uh, Yardage. Avon Coburn's also doing well with the running game. Um, that was that was a heartbreaking loss for them last week with the Bombers. But hey, they them and the Lions demonstrate that you don't mess with Swaggerville. <laughs> um, their second half schedule doesn't look too bad, except for the three games against the Alouettes. But then you see they face the three cellar dwellers, the Argos twice, and the Lions and Riders once. Honestly, these guys have it locked up, if not because the Argos are so bad. And Marcus Snakepen is a beast punt returner. Now onto the team in the city where it's Leafs and nothing else. Yes, I'm talking about the Argonauts, whose only respectable stat is having, you know... Not a fantastic running game, but at least it's decent. The defense is terrible. The offense has been horrendous, honestly. There's no chance in hell these guys get into the playoffs unless you get a serious choke out of Hamilton or there's a crossover. Their second half schedule does include two big games against the BC Lions. 
But then you see the two games apiece against the Thai Cats and the Bombers, and you can pretty much tell these guys are screwed. Steven Giles is eligible to play this week, though, so they might pick him over Cleo Lemon. I honestly would. So, but, you know, Yargos, they're not good. Barker, nice knowing you. As we progress to the West, the team to beat in there is obviously the Stamps, because they're just in beast mode. They are the only team that has beaten the Blue Bombers this season, which is pretty impressive. They really don't excel in really anything. Their run defense is second best. Their pass defense is second best. Their passing game is second best. Heck, their total offense is second best. Seriously, the Stamps, they also have a pretty good, easy schedule from here on out, so these guys pretty much have the West locked up, unless the Eskimos can turn it around from their slump. Because, you know, they have two games against the Eskimos that will probably decide the West. So honestly, I give the Stamps the nod. Good job, Calgary. Plus Henry Burris, I guess you could say he is the best quarterback in the CFL. He's only two yards behind Anthony Calvillo for the best quarterback, and he only has five interceptions, second best among quarterbacks. So props to the Stamps. Someone needs to head up to northern Alberta and tell the Eskimos, Hey, we know your best wide receiver, Fred Stamps, is hurt. But wake the hell up and learn to play without him, because they haven't been doing much of anything without him. They have not scored a single touchdown since he got hurt in the 28-16 loss to the Blue Bombers three weeks ago. They scored four against the Alouettes and one against BC. So if they want to avoid a second half collapse, they got to stop, you know, stop whining and start, you know, doing stuff without their best wide out. Especially because Jerome Messam's actually a really good running back, but you can't rely on a rushing game in the CFL obviously because well the Eskimos just clean up your act before you choke badly that's the riders job not yours so do something about it things starting to look up in Wally world as the BC Lions prepare for a tough away from home stretch at where they face measly Toronto twice and the riders once honestly Plus, the fact that Arlen Bruce and G. Roy Simon makes for a pretty killer one-two punch, and Solomon Aluminium is one of, if not the best defensive players in the CFL outside of Winnipeg. Yeah, things are going to look up in BC. Plus, the fact that really they face the Riders twice, and the Argos twice, so, and the reeling Eskimos once. And allowing them to just a single point, that's a definite improvement. So look out for BC in the coming weeks. They do have a relatively easy schedule. So, yeah. Must resist rider bashing. Must resist rider bashing. Ah, who the hell cares? They're 1-7 and seven and they get two games against the Bombers. And their remaining road games... Not promising. At Winnipeg. At Calgary. At Edmonton. At Calgary again. At Edmonton again. Their home games? Bombers. Argos. Who are 2-6 and six with one of their wins against the Riders. And twice with the BC Lions. Who happen to have gotten one of their two victories against the Riders. Honestly... We all know what Tamman did to Winnipeg. And with the Riders sucking in pretty much every statistical category, well, their offense isn't too bad, but yeah, they suck. End of story. Their defense is fifth in the league, though, so it pe pe pegs the question. How can a team ranked third in offense and third in defense have a 1-7 record and the worst record in the league? Then again, look at the Blue Bombers last year. They had the best rusher, the best receiver, and the sack leader, and they were 4-14. and 14. But the Riders' second half schedule doesn't do them favors. They're cooked. End of story. Yeah. 
That will do it for Ness Mensel's CFL Not Quite Halftime Report. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Excuse me if I'm not too knowledgeable. I'm kind of new to CFL. I started watching it last year. But that's another story for another day. Um, I hope I didn't mispronounce any names, too. May have gotten the BC guy's name wrong, but it's spelled so impossible that it's like a tongue twister. Anyways, Mother 3 coming up on Thursday. And then, of course... The jubilant moment. Friday starts Sim League preseason for hockey. Or Sim League hockey preseason. Confuzzled. Um, so yeah, that's about it. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys Thursday for Mother 3 as we begin our mountain excursion. And also, one last word. Go Bombers! Riders suck! BC sucks! Go Blue! Swaggerville!